Building a chicken coop can be really intimidating. It can be expensive and time consuming. And if you don't get it right, you can really struggle with keeping chickens. So I wanna give you seven tips on how to design a chicken coop that's gonna set you up for success. Tip number one, make it beautiful. You actually have to come out here every single day to collect eggs, and so you have to look at it every day. Just pick a theme. I picked a barn, but spend a few extra minutes just thinking about what do I want it to look like. Tip number two, know your nighttime versus your daytime predators. Here we have skunks, raccoons, mountain lions that will all come at night, but they don't come around during the day. So at night, when the chickens are all inside of the coop, I need to make this as maximally secure as I can. I have hardware cloth, not chicken wire, on the coop itself. But during the day when the chickens are out and about, all of the only predators I have are hawks. Now that may not be true for your situation, but know the difference. So my run doesn't have to be as secure as my coop. So this is just chicken wire. I didn't even dig it down because during the day, I don't have very hard predator pressure. So I didn't waste time and money building a really nice run, but I did spend a lot of time making sure that my coop itself is really secure. I have double latches on everything, either a latch and a carabiner or two latches so that raccoons can't easily just trip it and get in. Tip number three, don't frame it like a house. It doesn't need to be built for humans. You don't need studs 16 inches on center. This is for chickens, they're lightweight. Look, all I did was build a frame, the shape that I wanted, and then put shed siding, 3 8 shed siding, on the sides. It's really simple. It's strong enough for chickens. It'll keep predators out. It doesn't have to protect against bears, for goodness sake. If bears want to get in, I don't care what you build it out of, they're going to get in. Only thing that's going to keep a bear out is electricity. Also, don't build it so heavy you can't ever move it. One day we may want to move this to another location, maybe another house. I built it six foot by eight foot so it sits on the back of a trailer and it's light enough that I could get a guy on each corner and we could put it onto a trailer. If you build it like a house, it's not ever going to move. All right, tip number four, double your space. If you think you want 12 chickens, build it for 24. If you think you want five chickens, build it for 10. So I built my, my coop six foot by eight foot with 24 feet of roosting space. Because I thought I wanted 12, I built it twice as big, and it turns out I wanted more chickens. All right, so my fifth tip, you need to maximize ventilation and minimize ventilation. What does that mean? You need variable ventilation. It's maybe it's summertime and you're thinking, it's so hot, I need wide open windows. Well, what happens when it turns to freezing in the wintertime? Do you need to close it all back up? So what you wanna do is have options. Right now I can take these windows out. I've got hardware cloth behind here. So in the summertime, I can open this thing wide up and there's a cross breeze to ventilation all the way on the other side. In the springtime, the fall maybe I'll just close up these windows here and leave this open for some ventilation when it's really cold at night in the winter time maybe I'll close the whole thing up to keep the heat in as much as possible you don't want to make it airtight because the ammonia fumes could be damaging to your chickens but you want to be able to be flexible with what how much ventilation you need so that you can keep the inside to the right temperature for the chickens Tip number six, make sure that you can access everything without going in the chicken's area. That means you wanna be able to open this thing up and clean it out without having to walk in it. Walk-in coops are gross. You get it on your feet, you walk in the chicken's mess. You don't have to do that if you don't have to. If you're designing it yourself from scratch, go ahead and just make it lifted like this. I don't have to get in the mess myself. Don't do that, it's not necessary. You wanna be able to come collect eggs without having to walk in the chicken run or into the coop. Look, I can access this whole thing. The chickens don't have access to this area. Come in here, I can grab eggs or whatever I need to do, change out nesting material, and I never have to walk in the chicken coop. Yeah, my only regret is that I put the feeder and the waterer inside of the run. So once every two weeks to refill the food, I do have to come in here. If I did it again, I probably would have the food accessible from outside the run. My seventh and most important tip is the whole reason that you got backyard chickens in the first place. You wanted clean, fresh, healthy eggs. And then you build a coop that's so gross. There's poop everywhere. The chickens are walking around in their own mess. Don't do it. Make it so easy to clean that it always stays clean. So with a deep litter method, 
It's really easy to clean. Every month you come out, you put new wood shavings down, put the roosting bars far enough apart that they aren't pooping on the roosting bars. You wanna make sure that your nesting boxes are far enough away from your roosting bars that they're not pooping in the nesting boxes. If you don't keep everything clean, you're gonna have chickens getting sick from standing in their own mess. Then you're gonna to have to medicate them. And then you're gonna end up with eggs that have medication in them, which is the whole reason you probably got chickens in the first place. Think it through carefully, deep litter method, roosting bars far apart, nesting boxes far away from the roosting bars.